Rich Carmona was born in uh, New York City on 110th Street and uh, grew up in Harlem and Washington Heights. Uh, my parents, uh, both uh, immigrants, uh, came, uh, my father came with uh, his mother, my abuelita, when uh, he was a little boy and uh, grew up in the city also. Uh, most of my time was spent uh, between about 110th and 151st Street on the west side. A little time in the South Bronx. Later on in my life up in the North Bronx, got sent up to high school there. I uh, wasn't a very good student, became a truant at an early age. Uh, it was a tough time. We we're a poor family. Um, my mom and dad were good people, but they had a lot of problems and they struggled. My abuelita often, uh, the matriarch of the family, bailed us out a lot of times when we were having problems. And uh, ultimately, at about 17 years old, uh, you know, running the streets and uh, not really a bad kid, but not really spending a lot of time in school and taking advantage of the good opportunities that were there. I um, enlisted in the Army after speaking with some people who had grown up in a neighborhood before me, one who was in the Army and Special Forces. He encouraged me to go back to school. I said, I'm too old. So he said, why don't you go talk to my friend? His friend was an Army recruiter. I enlisted, went in the Army, and that was probably the pivotal change in my life. <laughs> a job, I had some security, being held accountable, got an equivalency diploma, uh, tried out and was successful in uh, Army Special Forces, saw the world like the recruiter told me I would, learned a lot about myself, my capabilities, I had never been tested that way, uh, enjoyed the responsibility, enjoyed uh, gaining more rank and responsibility within the Army, thought I'd stay in the Army as a career actually because it was probably the most stable environment I ever had in my whole life. But uh, after a few years, my colleagues uh, encouraged me to go to college. <clears throat> I um, applied, but I couldn't get in. I didn't have uh, any real transcript. I had uh, no SATs or PSATs. So uh, I was fortunate to find Bronx Community College that had an open enrollment program for Vietnam veterans who had an equivalency diploma. I did that, <clears throat> became a very good student uh, because I was very focused and disciplined and recognized the unique opportunity that I was receiving and uh, worked lots of different jobs uh, because having to support myself and my family so I've been a, uh, a paramedic, I've been a soldier, police officer, registered nurse, physician's assistant, teacher and, um, and finally found my way to medical school. But well, when I enlisted in the Army, I specifically enlisted to go into Special Forces. That was my intent. But I was trained initially as an infantryman and then went to jump school. So I was an airborne infantryman. And then you have to try out for Special Forces. It was then that I found out that uh, even if you qualify, take the test and you qualify, both physical and mental, that uh, you still had to have a high school diploma. So that's probably what really drove me to get my equivalency diploma while I was in the Army. And I received it while I was in the Army and then uh, was able to stay in Special Forces. Special Forces uh, was uh, another m big event in my life because uh, it was the ultimate challenge. Uh, they push you far beyond anything you think you're capable of. You really do learn about discipline and duty and honor and country and integrity. You learn how to complete a mission. You're challenged with some of the most challenging missions ever. And so as a young boy, really, 19, 20 years old, I was in Vietnam and uh, had immense responsibility, both tactically and medically. I was responsible for a whole village that we uh, lived in, in Bato. I uh, took care of parasitic diseases, sanitation problems, gunshot wounds, all kinds of problems because I was it. There was nobody else in those areas and medevacs always weren't available. I uh, took care of my friends. I saw some of my friends die. I was wounded. So I matured a great deal during that time. And I really came back uh, <clears throat> with a different outlook on the world and what I needed to do and, and all of the opportunities that were before me. So the Army and Special Forces specifically uh, really gave me the jump start I needed to be successful the rest of my life. Well, being a physician is a very, very unique position in our society. It is one where you have the uh, 
very special opportunity, right, and obligation to care for others, but also to share their most intimate secrets, to probe their mind, their heart, their soul, their body. And so when you think of the preeminent position that a physician holds in our society, it's extraordinary, the access you have to individuals, but also the immense obligation that you accept for the care. You really become a leader. You are responsible for the destiny of that person, that community, or in my job now as Surgeon General, for the citizens of the United States. So it's an immense responsibility that you accept. Part of it's the Hippocratic Oath. Part of it is your own duty and honor. Part of it is many of the uh, core competencies and many of the attributes I learned as a young soldier in the Army and then Special Forces. And uh, so that, that really is what drives me for excellence and to make sure that as I pass through here in this job that I make it better than I found it and pass it off to my successor in better condition than I have found it. Not only as a physician, but certainly as a Latino physician, very important because many of us don't get to this level. Uh, you know, when you become Surgeon General, you become a member of a very unique fraternity. There's only been 17 of us in the history of this country, and uh, I'm the 17th.